and welcome to the firm. It is the first judicial decision on the Companies Act 2013 and it goes in favor of shareholder rights and corporate democracy. Earlier this year, Godrej Industries decided to merge with group company Wadala Commodities. In April, it approached the Bombay High Court asking for permission to dispense with the court convened shareholder meeting in favor of a postal ballot and e-voting. The Godrej petition relied on section 110 of the Companies Act 2013 which says a company may in respect of any item of business other than ordinary business and any business in respect of which directors or auditors have a right to be heard at any meeting transact by means of postal ballot instead of transacting such business at a general meeting. The Bombay High Court though was not very pleased with this petition. It said in a judgment, the shareholder has an inalienable right to ask questions, seek clarifications and receive responses before he decides which way he will vote. The right to persuade and the right to be persuaded are, as I see it, of vital importance. In an effort for greater inclusiveness, these rights cannot be altogether defenestrated. To say, therefore, that no meeting is required and that the shareholder must cast his vote only on the basis of the information that has been sent to him by post or email seems to me to be completely contrary to the legislative intent and spirit to the express terms of the SEBI circular and amended listing agreements clause 35B and clause 49. With those words, Justice Gautam Patel of the Bombay High Court put an end to the practice of companies seeking to dispense with court convened shareholder meetings and instead obtaining shareholder approval via postal ballots and e-votings. Now, he may have relied on a technicality to make that ultimate decision, but there's no denying that the order is eloquently in favor of shareholder democracy. Well, that's the short version. For the long version, that is the impact of this decision on corporate India, I'm joined by Sanjay Asher of Crawford Bailey and Sharad Abhyankar of Khetan. Gentlemen, a very warm welcome to both of you. I'm going to start by pointing out that Section 110 of this new Companies Act is very closely modeled on Section 192A of the 1956 Act. And here's what 192A says in brief, that a listed public company may get any resolution passed by means of a postal ballot instead of transacting the business in a general meeting of the company. Now, has there been a history, Sandra, of companies approaching the courts successfully to dispense with shareholder meetings and even court convened meetings in order to be able to get shareholder approval only via postal ballot and e-voting? There is, there is. First of all, let's look at the provisions of law. Hmm. The law does not compel you to have a meeting. It only says a court may direct the meeting to be held. Hmm. And this provisions you have to read with the company court rules where there are provisions for the purpose of dispensation of the meetings as well. For example, if you have no objection certificate from three fourths in value representing majority and number or some courts insist on 90 percent, some courts insist on 100 percent, in which event the court dispenses with the meeting completely. Now, what, what is the no objection certificate? It is another form of postal ballot. I looked up yes, and I ITC. found one. ITC was in the early Bharti, part of the year. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are you saying that in your experience, because your combined experience spans most of corporate India, that several listed companies have sought to dispense with the shareholder meeting and attempt to get approval via postal ballot? Has that been the case in different high courts across the country? Would you say that? I don't think it would be several. It could be probably a just a handful. But there have been instances of this. Therefore, Godrej must have thought that if people could do it under 192A of the earlier act, then why not do it under 110? The only thing is, uh, most of the applications that have come before the courts are a complete dispensation of meetings on the basis of cons consents obtained even before such an so application those are the has no been objection moved. Certificates that Correct. Is referring to, so, right? it, it is not doing the uh, voting through an alternative means, but a complete dispensation of meetings altogether. Right. But so it is neither instance, postal the ballot. ITC case from earlier this year, there was no NOC involved from what I could read of either the petition or the decision, right? So in so Bharti Airtel as well, uh, meetings of the creditors were held. The only dispense, the only mechanism they uh, were directed to do is to obtain Bharti Airtel's shareholders' consent by, mean, by means of a postal ballot. So as far so back that as happened 2006, they did away Delhi with the High court convened uh, shareholder uh, meeting. Now and that, that they did under 192A, right? Uh, that they did under actually a discretionary power under 391, 394. What I'm trying to understand is that 
Is there any difference between what 192A allowed you to do and what 110 allowed you to do? Because 110 is new. The only difference I could find is that 192 very clearly re referred to listed companies. 110 refers to all companies. It doesn't distinguish between listed and Do you see any difference in the application That's of the two? Nothing at all. Any difference in so the application I think of the we should look at also the history of where postal ballot came in from. The Parliamentary Committee, uh, Standing Committee on Companies Amendment Bill 1997 had actually proposed postal ballot. Hmm. The Department of Company Affairs Working Group on Companies Act had a very interesting observation to say that no, we are not uh, yet mature enough possibly. The system is not good enough. But sir, uh, no I'm sorry will. for interrupting you. What I'm trying yeah. to understand is that does the law mm. allow you to do what you have attempted to do in the Godrej case? And if yes, then, you know, why was Justice Patel so enraged by the effort of a company to do this? So that was my we, question. I clearly see a missing link between the manner of voting or participation of shareholders in, in uh, deciding the vote of the company as such mm. and substituting that for holding a meeting because and that's why uh, I think we should have some lessons from the history because the e-voting or postal ballot were never considered to be substitutes of physical so they meeting. they were meant to be in but view of in, the meeting. They always so put in view of meeting yeah. that wording I think that intent is somewhere, somewhere opaque that postal ballot SEBI always thought that postal ballot was an additional mechanism of uh, voting rather than substituting a meeting. So I have I have a slightly different view to say that look, let's look at the standing committee which Sharad referred, 64th report, where the government view says, if I may read out, postal ballot includes electronic waiting. Experience of several decades have shown most of the share, shareholders who reside in uh, far-flung areas are unable to attend annual general or extraordinary general meeting. No, Sanjay, and therefore, Sanjay, nobody is denying that there is an advantage to add on to the physical meeting the ability for voters to vote, shareholders to vote from wherever they are, either through a postal ballot or e-voting. I think the core question even this judgment throws up is, shouldn't the two be additionalities? It cannot be that let's do away with the meeting, let's only do postal ballot and e-voting. That's the question Justice Patel has ruled on as well. He says, no, you can't do that. He's found a technicality in order to say that, look, nowhere in section 100 and 10 have they referred to court convened meetings. So he's made that distinction and he said no, they refer to company meetings, not court convened meetings and hence section 110 cannot apply in this case as in Godrej's case. I'm asking you to focus on the core issue here. Can you get away with not doing a court convened meeting or even a shareholder meeting and just rely on postal ballot and e-voting? To my mind, absolutely yes. Even after this decision? Even after this judgment because this judgment uh, with due respect is not binding on any other applications which will come up before the Bombay High Court. The doctrine, what we call it the doctrine of uh, stare decisis, does not apply in this case. There is a Supreme Court judgment hmm. of 1979 which states that uh, the decision of the single bench, single judge, is not binding on the same court as well. So therefore, surely uh, one can make out a case before the same High Court and get a uh, postal ballot uh, mechanism for the purpose of uh, uh, in an amalgamation or a 391 to 394 uh, application. You don't agree with that, sir? So that, that's going to be very interesting because uh, one of the things which uh, Gautam Patel, uh, Justice Patel also uh, refers to is the ability to not just discuss but amend the resolution. Absolutely. And again, as back as in 97, they are saying that it's not merely the technicality or the modus which is the, the uh, uh, really a bar. But managements often propose amendments after hearing the shareholders right. and those are put to vote. So really, and I, I, I had said this, uh, I said this even when we are discussing e-voting, that the way rules are structured today, both postal ballot and e-voting eliminate any amount of de any uh, debate. debate completely. So at the very best, there should be additionalities for those shareholders who cannot physically make it to the meeting. They Correct. cannot be a replacement of the meeting. Correct. That's the position That's that the, the position. decision has taken by Justice Patel. And, I fully and you fully that. agree with that. Whether Absolutely. it's a court convened meeting, as was the case or here, a or, a or a shareholder meeting. Some I have a different view even for the amendment of the resolution. If you see the 1913 law, if you see the 1956 Act, or if you see the 2013 law, if there was a possibility of amending a particular motion, the law would have permitted it, would have provided in so many words. If I am doing something by postal ballot, 
it is only the shareholders who are attending the meeting will have an opportunity to amend the motion. That's right. Correct. But then why should uh, the remaining shareholders be deprived? If I am doing it through no, no, they are choosing to deprive themselves. No, they are not being deprived I'm by the opting. company. They are saying, I cannot make it to your meeting. I am going to at least exercise my vote, if not exercise my right to debate or right to amend. You, are, you don't want to deprive them of at least the vote, right, Sanjay? Agreed. But what I am saying is that the law does not contemplate any amendment. Otherwise, they would have stated in so many words. But the, where, where, where but the practice say? has been over the years that management explains the resolution, shareholders may debate it, may raise points and there could have been instances where managements have altered their proposal. Very he goes on to say as much in his decision that it's a draft sparingly. scheme or a draft I proposal would say or a draft resolution till then. I would say sparingly management have amended the resolution. To my mind they have not been tested in a court of law whether, oh. whether the amendment to a resolution is valid in law. I read it again today, the 56th law, the 1913 law, the 2013, nowhere it says. So you are saying he is arguing wrongly to my mind, yes. in allowing or, or insisting that shareholders must be allowed to debate no, and even amend. No, only the amendment. And even amend, yeah. I am only in the amendment of I get a motion. that, because you are saying that the amendment in itself might not be lawful. Yeah.